Welcome back, everyone! Hello, 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 hello welcome hello. back to the HOP, episode 5, round 5. We are back. Steven, why don't you tell the lovely folk what we are drinking? We are drinking Left Hand Brewing's Raspberry Milk Stout. Really sweet, really creamy, uh, nice winter option. Happy Valentine's Day. And then we're following it up with the Brewery Oma Gang, Three Philosophers. We have two different versions of it, which are going to be super exciting exciting hey steven hey gabe um let's grab a drink okay episode five here we are we're back. We're back. We're ready to do the damn thing. Um, before we get started, Steven, how, yes, Gabe. how, how you feeling? You, you, you all right? You, uh, want, you want to tell the folks at home what's going on? My soul you, is you a little okay? broken. A um, little insight into how we record the podcast. We do not record these the day before you hear them, so we're recording a few weeks out, and uh, I just witnessed the Green Bay Packers get absolutely steamrolled by the... San Francisco 49ers, uh, so... Oh my god. Ew! Yeah, that's uh, not fun. Shout out to Shit's Creek for that soundbite. That's how I um, feel about that. Um, yeah, it was rough. It was rough. I turned it off uh, a little ways through. Kept the hat on the whole way, but... Uh... You, you stuck with it, and I appreciate that, but yeah, 27 nothing at halftime, uh, that'll do it to you, so... I kept, as I was watching the game, I just kept thinking back to the beginning of the year... When we won. Oh, he got and, all sentimental. And I just kept thinking about the interview at the very end of the game when they went up to Aaron Rodgers and he just went, we got a defense. And I was like, what happened <laughs> between then and now? Um, And what's crazy is, didn't you guys play them once again, once earlier in week like 12, I think, or 14, something like that. And you guys got smoked again. I mean... In our defense, the 49ers are an excellent football team. They're doing everything right, and they, them and the Chiefs, despite the fact that it's way too much red, and I'm really upset about that. But yeah, other than that... that's what we're most upset about. It's like it's a super red bowl, and that's just... But other than that, it's really going to be a good Super Bowl between uh, Pat Mahomes and the Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo, San Francisco defense, running game, everything they have going on there. It's... Uh, it's impressive, I got to be honest, but I am I am a little bit of a shell of a man at the moment. I'm Steven, you look I'm like I a need drink. a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely ready for a drink. How are you doing today, Gabe? I am good. Um the Chargers were nowhere near the we we couldn't even see the we couldn't even smell the playoffs and Correct. uh from where we were sitting, we most likely lost our quarterback. Philip Rivers officially has moved to Florida. That is 100% fact and oh, really? so yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're not here to talk about that. Other than that, I am good. I am uh, ready. Uh, we are going to switch things up just a little bit. We'll get into that later when we uh, taste those Oma Gang beers. Uh, but for right now, uh, yeah, we're this episode is another great one, another fun one. Uh, like I said, the beers are a little bit darker this time. So for all of you dark beer fans out there, uh definitely tune in listen in because this one's going to be good for you and we've got a lot of news and notes and trends in the beer world so i suggest we just dive right in yeah let's dive into that and uh now that you've told us how fun and and uh what a good time this episode's going to be let's start by bringing it down a notch should we and talk about the fires in australia yeah yes that's well, really depressing. The fires but, in Australia and what beer companies are doing to help that. Exactly. We're going to talk about uh, Sierra Nevada Brewing. And um, Sierra Nevada, I just feel like they're going to come up a lot in the podcast. They're just so big in the craft brewing community. Um, but we did profile them and we talked about a uh, beer that they brewed um, in 2018 called the Resilience IPA. What they actually did was they enlisted more than 1,400 craft breweries around the country to brew this beer they they made a recipe that was pretty accessible for any craft brewery and they sent it around and, and just said you know here's the recipe please brew this put it on tap in your in your tap room and all proceeds from this beer are going to go to campfire relief well 
uh, Australian and brewers. That was for when Northern California. Correct. Right? That was to help the relief efforts for the campfire, which was um, burning Northern California. So Sierra Nevada and Ken Gross- Grossman um, are now Ken Grossman, the head brewing head brewmaster at Sierra Nevada, are now helping um, the Australian Resilience Beer Campaign. They're taking a leaf right out of Sierra Nevada's book. In fact, Sierra Nevada has been helpful in organizing the effort, um, which came from a desire in the local beer industry in Australia to find ways to support those impacted by and fighting the fires. Um, So they have a website. Uh, It is Resilience dot beer i believe let me just double check that yes resilience dot beer where you can go to get the recipe get distribution facts sign up to join the effort they will send you uh the you know the recipe including the distributors that um, you need to contact to get the ingredients to brew this specific beer and uh they're gonna create a collective of craft breweries in australia and also around the world internationally um people raising money to help with the relief efforts uh, they said if we couldn't love Sierra Nevada enough and how talk about how great they are. I mean, just another awesome step that they're doing. We talked about it a few weeks ago. We said, you know, this is a great brewery that is doing good for the community. They're trying to give back. And uh, certainly this is a time when I mean, we talked about Sierra Nevada's sustainability efforts. We talked about them yeah. giving back to the earth. They're uh, they're efforts with the trails um, in in Chico, California and everything like that. And the earth does not need our help has never needed our help more than it does right now uh with what is just the just mind blowing devastation in in Australia um so the re- they said the resilience beer is an opportunity for the Australian and global brewing community to work together in a collef- collective effort with brewers suppliers retailers uh beer lovers and beer media uniting to maximize uh, the fundraising potential. So I encourage you, uh, whether you are um, somebody who brews beer, uh, whether you're just somebody who's interested, go to resilience.beer, check out the website. Um, but just just a, a great story of the beer industry coming together to help um, in a time of just desperate need. We love you, Australia. Our thoughts are with you, as always. Love the kangaroos. Love the kangaroos. Love the, the little... Uh, koalas thank you couldn't think of the name uh so yeah that's really awesome that sierra nevada is doing that uh moving on to something uh, completely you, different something uh, completely 180 for all of you uh who love mexican style lagers a new one may be coming soon called the el chapo mexican lager uh given government approval to start selling the beer um it may be coming from a mexican company run by aladrina guzman salazar which is the drug lord's daughter the name el chapo coming from joaquin el chapo guzman the imprisoned leader of the ruthless sinaloa cartel can i just uh, say before you go any further i'm obsessed with this guy i am obsessed with el chapo he is (laughs) such a like okay El Chapo was in prison somewhere. I don't have all the details on the story. I'm going to mess it up. The point is that like he escaped escaped the prison in right. like in like modern times with like they flew like a helicopter in to the prison courtyard. Somehow they got this guy. He was on trial in New York like last year and they they had him in prison in Brooklyn, but the courthouse was in Manhattan. So they had to like close down the bridge oh, entirely. Well, sure. They had this guy like in like an airtight container he was like in chains in the container yeah. in an armored yep. truck like Anthony laying Hopkins down like style. in a coffin style like yes like seriously like yeah. it was like hannibal lecter shit all those like, this movies guy, where they show you know the henchmen breaking the boss out of you know jail uh, they watched a couple movies and they said oh that's how it's done so it's like really it honestly <laughs> that like this guy is yeah. fucking diabolical and like he's 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 not a good dude but now he's a beer but now he is a beer by his <laughs> daughter who is starting um, with this uh, unnamed Mexican company um, trying to make a 4% beer made from malt, rice, and honey. And one of the coolest part is she rolled out the few beer bottles, a few styles of it at a fashion trade show uh, a couple weeks ago. And she started representing a clothing line as well for her father. So... Once this beer gets approved, you can go out and and buy the El Chapo Mexican Lager if you're into 
Or yeah, I would say, or... you know, we don't, we haven't, obviously I haven't tried it, don't know too much about it, uh, nope. but I would say, um, what what was the other one, Land Shark? That's kind of a Mexican style lager, right? Uh, yeah. I believe so. Maybe, yeah. Um, but it's gonna be, I mean, you know, I think that this is something you drink more for the, just the cool factor. And... <laughs> Again, oh, I say cool factor, like, glass. with full awareness, like, this guy murdered a lot of people. He's not a good yeah, man. Yeah, he's not the best There's guy. nothing <laughs> to idolize about him. We don't condone any of this. I'm just saying he's fascinating, and he is a beer now. Moving right along, PBR. Welcome to the craft beer world. Um, PBR is now launching a uh, craft beer as the as a diff as a it's more of a craft beer brand outside of their PBR family, um, they're making a Captain Pax. It's a standalone craft beer brand uh, launching their first flagship offering, the Seabird IPA in Wisconsin in Illinois. So all of you lucky bastards can go get one very soon. It's a four point five percent alcoholic drink made with uh, Magnum Citra, Cascade, and Mosaic hops. It's a new step for them, I think. Yeah, I mean, it does raise the question uh, amongst... I mean, I definitely, you know, we when we're researching this story, um, one of the first things you see is a lot of comments and a lot of um, feedback from the craft beer community about mm. is what it craft beer? defines craft beer. Is this craft right. beer? I mean, uh, Pabst is one of the largest brewing operations in the country, and they have created a craft beer brand this captain pabst um they're also rebranding their milwaukee tap room as the captain pabst's pilot house but But they're making out rolling out some really new things really cool things that sound really cool so if you're in the area definitely go check it out uh and steven i know you'll like this a lot of barrel aged things i do as well i mean you well you know me so well (laughs) you're singing my language but you know it's um I I mean it's definitely an an effort by the company to stay relevant as uh America trends more and more towards the craft beer community and we don't begrudge them that at all um that's a great thing. It's just an interesting conversation because whether you like PBR or not um it does kind of raise the discussion in the community about does this qualify as craft beer or should we be focused on beer that's more independently owned and of course we like to drink all of these things just with knowledge, you know, um, right. We don't discriminate one way or the other. Um, it's also, um, I mean, it's a, it's a classic IPA, right? Everything about it is correct in the world of IPA. It is not PBR at all, but it's like, uh, it's 4.5 alcohol by volume, which is a little low, but it's got 45 IBUs. It's like right in line, perfectly balanced. It's like just going to be, just a classic. I mean, if anything, if nothing else, uh, this is the kind of thing that you could start seeing at like ballparks under the craft beer name. Yeah, you go, and you like, go, okay, this well, is I'm, definitely a beer I would want to grab at like the Yankee game. Yankee, yeah, I mean, it's like okay, I'm not gonna, you know, you're at a ballpark. Your your beer options tend to be pretty limited. What what, what would I rather have? Would I rather have, um, you know, would I rather have Budweiser today, or would I rather have this uh, Captain Paps? You know, I. I I would definitely give it a shot. It's um, so so. I've got I've got a pirate joke for you. Oh, oh, do you? Oh yeah. What is a pirate's favorite letter? Don't say it. What is it? Please don't. What say is it. it? What is it? Say it. No. What is it? R. You think it's R, but it's really the C. Yay! <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> I know pirate jokes. Last up for us in the news and notes. Oh, we're bringing it home. Oh, baby, I'm excited about this one. Two Roads Brewing Two Roads. in Stratford, Connecticut had four beers named to the Beer Connoisseur's Top 200 Beers of 2019. Bang! Exclamation point. That's fucking right. Like Exclamation point. Four beers from Two Roads Brewing made the list. Uh, Beer Connoisseur does a top 100 beers every year. Uh, They do an official review conducted in a single blind tasting format. 
um, which adheres to the Beer Judge Certification Program style guidelines of 2015. Hand selected judges. Very, very, very prestigious sounding. It does sound, it's a lot of words. Um, but these hand selected judges have a uh, minimum beer judge certification program ranking of national or master Cicerone. Um, God, we got to get into that. There's got to be. I was, I was just about to say you read my mind. My oh, my first God. Thought was like, yo, how do we do this? That's so cool. But anyway, uh, four of these top 100s came out of Two Rows Brewing. Now, obviously, we've talked about it on the podcast. If you know us, if you um, have listened to some previous episodes, we love Two Roads Brewing. We are we are so excited to do a Two Roads episode for you guys. We're going to do it down the line. It's but coming. Don't worry. Two Roads is an amazing brewery in Stratford, Connecticut that's doing everything right. Uh, we have kind of watched them. I mean, I've been going to Two Roads for years, um, and we've kind of watched them in real time before our eyes grow from uh, small to big to bigger to uh, brewing, you know, becoming a contract brewery and doing, and, and now they've... And yeah, just brewing other company's beer. They send them the beer, yeah, and they, it's like, whoa. Like, they're... I I, I feel as though every time I go back to Two Roads, every time... I take the tour. De- definitely take the tour. You get tour beers, you get a little boozy, and you learn a lot. It's incredible. But... Every time I take the tour, I feel like they're like, okay, and now we have this, and now we have that. It's like, yo, it you changes guys are every really time. Up. I went back this summer. So, so what they've done now, the biggest change in Two Roads, probably since Two Roads opened, was that they've now opened Area Two, a completely two. separate brewing facility, which they literally just built so that their brewmaster could just fuck around. Like it's just a playground for this guy. You walk in there and there's just barrels on barrels on barrels from all over the globe. They have barrels shipping in from Scotland, from Ireland, from around the country, from California. They're barrel aging in wine barrels, scotch barrels, rum barrels. To, it's it's insane. They have a cool ship. They have so many things that we're going to get into. They're growing their own hops at the facility. They have a hop garden whereas a lot of They breweries- have a hop garden. A lot of breweries are just using, you know, lupulin powder and things like that. But these guys have a hop garden where they grow their own hops. So the four and, beers. And I also want to point out that with this list of 200 beers, um, these four beers from Two Roads are all in within the top 100 range. I think you mentioned that, but I really want to highlight that. Coming yeah. in at uh, this beer, the Two Roads Cruise Control, coming in at number two overall. That's a hellas. I yeah I think I I think I wasn't clear about that but the list is is the top 200 beers and in the top 100 the top half of the list four of These them are four. two roads yeah yeah um, that's so like an even bigger accomplishment number two overall like Gabe said was the cruise control Hellas um, the table terroir which I've had it's delicious the synopsis dark sour cherry. Uh, both of those coming out of area two, and then the two juicy, which is a two juicy, juicy which is a classic favorite. I've juicy had juicy so New England times. IPA, double IPA. Yeah. Um, all four of those made the list. Um, two roads, of course, was you know was very excited about that. They said they've had lock, lots of lack, accolades uh, over the past year, which is mm-hmm. true of them pretty much every year, uh, but to culminate the year with, with these awards was just icing on the cake for them. Um, it's it's just so exciting to us. Being from Connecticut, being so close by, having visited them so often, to see them uh, perform so well on the on the national stage. and Having get a cousin kind of who lives literally walking distance from the brewery is yeah. just... You want to talk about jealousy. Check. But it's also a good thing, because if I lived there, we like if we lived over there, I don't think oh. we'd get anything done. <laughs> this show wouldn't be wouldn't be the HOP. It would just be the Two Roads podcast. The Two because Roads podcast. Seriously, you can go in there any any time and try something new. There's especially with Area Two. There's so much to try every time you go in there. There's something new. There's the you know, and the beers are like if you're a sour person. Like, listen, Area Two. Not- they've got beers that are every shade of color. Bright ruby red, blue, purple, black. Like I mean, the fruit that they're putting into these beers, and they're aging them in like red wine barrels, and they're just—it's—it's it's crazy stuff that I've that I've not seen in most breweries. They have like taps in the middle of this the bre- like, the facility, yeah, the brewery, because they know oh we're gonna give tours and people are gonna drink right. It's gonna go On from the, the big barrel right into your glass. Yeah. And Area 2 has its own tour that's completely separate, so Ugh. check it out. Um, but the pain of the Packers losing is just sitting with me. I need a drink. 
I think Steven, it's time. I'll say it again. You look like I need a drink. I I really do. So let's 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 have a let's toast. Die. And since you always get the jazz music, I'm I'm taking it from you for today. Hit Ooh. me with that jazz. Okay. Mm. There's just something so right about it. Here's to those who wish us well and all the rest can go to hell. May you work like you don't need the money, love like you've never been hurt, dance like no one is watching, screw like it's being filmed, and drink like a true Irishman. Well said. Hi. Salud. To, to Irishman, the movie, and, and the people. my people. You're definitely not my people. I'm more Irish than you are. I'm not Irish at all. See? We can That's talk about proving it my point. <laughs> um, let's drink some beer. then left hand raspberry milk stout let's do it i'm pouring it live on air it's happening right now oh yeah look at that color it's got see it's got that redness to it it's very subtle but like it almost kind of looks purple from the way you look at it can i just say see from, that, right? from where i'm pouring it like it's not even near my face but the raspberry fumes just yep. come off the beer. Um, it's got it, like it. It smells like. I, I feel like I haven't had it a lot, but have you ever had like raspberry chocolate? Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Yep. Like I, I feel like I can perfect. taste it already. I'm looking at so the the head on it is like a nice tan, creamy head. It's like mm, maybe like half an inch, and it's lingering around i'm pouring it into a, a tulip glass from a 12 ounce can head head is disappearing a little bit for me but that's because of the different kind of glass that different i glass, have yeah. um i've just got like a regular like beer pint glass um yeah the smell i just get i get raspberry like jam i get like oh it's so sweet bit. smelling the chocolate is there but it's behind the like the main thing that hits you is the raspberry in the nose here here we go Mm. See, okay it's a valentine's okay. day beer it's like i just want to here's here here's what i'm gonna say i'm in love with someone now <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest when we picked this beer i thought yeah let's do this it'll be different i'm excited and i was there was a small part of me that thought this might not be my jam but I said, you know what? Try new things. You never know. I don't really have a lot of milk stouts. It's not my go-to. So I was like, let me try it. Obviously, it'll be something different. It'll be something to talk about. There will be a lot of flavors. One sip. And I mean, I'm good. I'm hooked. I, I, I love it. I think it's great. It's really good. It's, it's interesting because when you smell it, what you smell, like I was saying, is, you know, there's chocolate. There's some caramel some but the main thing that you smell is just raspberry and jam and fruit and then you take a sip and the first thing that hit me i don't know about you the first thing that i hit i got hit with was chocolate malt like the the mm. raspberry wasn't really there it was like malt coffee like the roasted darkness of the beer and then once it settles I, you start getting like i can taste the raspberry and the aftertaste in the back end you know what i mean right but it yeah. wasn't the first thing to hit me that's I think that's what makes it great is that it's not it, it's not a lot of flavor at once. It's or it's not sorry, let me rephrase that. It's not one flavor at once followed by others. I feel like when you smell it, like you said, when you smell it, it's it's one thing. But when you taste it, it's all the flavors mixing. And mm -hmm. that's what you get. And I and I get the chocolate and I also get um the the sweetness of like a caramel it's like mm -hmm. a i'm getting like a chocolate raspberry caramel like i want to pour this sweet. on pancakes <laughs> it's not i feel like i've heard you say that before <laughs> about beer about beer i feel like you said that yeah and i love that review it's just such a 
Well, what interesting? Uh, maybe maybe we we're drinking the framing hammer. I don't know, but this framing hammer. What framing I was, hammer? I was gonna miss an opportunity to say it again. Of course not. So um, okay, so this. Let beer. me ask you. Yeah. Dessert beer, yes or no? Would you dessert consider beer. this a dessert beer? Do you mean like it doesn't pair well with food? Yeah, it like I mean, if I was thinking like a dessert beer, I'm always like, well, what really is a dessert beer? I mean, it's not um, like it's not like the apple crumb cake or right. Um, you know, some of those beers which are so sweet that I'm like, oh, you have this is like a one and done, just like you know. It's so sweet. It's a it's a after dinner like okay we're winding down. Let's mm. have something nice and sweet with like a lower ABV. So in that sense, no. But I also okay. it's so flavorful and strong. I don't know that I would want to eat with it. You know, like it is like it's a it's an event in and, and of see, itself. Right. I I feel as though I would want to eat this with a piece of chocolate cake like today. Mm. Like if I had some chocolate cake in my house. I'd go cut myself a piece and absolutely this would be like the beer and a small piece of cake would be the entire dessert. I see what you're saying. So like it pairs well with dessert as opposed to like the beer is the dessert. That's what you mean. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I think the reason why I asked that is just because of the flavor of it. It just immediately hit me with the, you know, it's like the, one of the first things I thought of. So Yeah. The facts of the beer wise, um, alcohol by volume ABV, it's a five point seven percent. Not entire, not too strong, but no. not. It doesn't skimp out on you, but not not hiding from you. Um, this is. IBUs, I feel like this is the beer that, like, sorry to cut, keep cutting no. you off. This is the kind of beer that I think if you can handle it, you could definitely drink more than one. Oh yeah. It's, it's very, it's very bitter. sweet. It's very, very sweet. But if you if you really like that sweetiness, but I mean... But it's not like cloyingly sweet. You know what I mean? It's not like right. so it's sweet that like, you're like... Eh, it's uh, like balanced. It's nice. You know? It just makes you want to... It it's a Valentine's Day beer. I'm telling you. It's like so I need... So will I like, find love if I give this to someone? You might. Will you be, will you be my Valentine and I pour them this? Uh, it's got Probably a... Probably needs a date. <laughs> Okay, Gabe's desperate. Now it's on the podcast. Wow. Wow. Um Beer Advocate consensus rating of 87 untapped 3.79 out of 5. Um in the mouth it's really rich and creamy and velvety and like it's like really delicately carbonated. Like it doesn't feel strong in your mouth. It's like it kind of sits like it just coats your mouth. It's just really it's rich. It really is like a like you were saying, like a raspberry chocolate that like melted in your mouth. That, um, that the the flavor is like I don't know why. Maybe it's the way I'm drinking it, but specifically, it's just like hitting like the back of my tongue, and it's leaving like an amazing aftertaste of like raspberry of raspberry chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I just ate a candy bar. <laughs> yeah, You're and not I'm wrong. not upset about that. I don't hate it. It it's it's straight up the name. Like what it is, what it, what is on the can is what you're gonna yes. get. It's a raspberry 100%. milk stout. It's a chocolate stout. It's raspberry. There's milk in it. Like, okay, there's not milk in it, but we should talk about that. What? Yes. What's a milk stout? I was just about to start mentioning that. Um, milk stout, also called sweet stout or a cream stout. Uh, basically, it is a stout beer containing lactose, which is a sugar derived from milk. There's no actual milk in the beer, but like Stephen said. Uh, no actual milk in the beer, just the lactose. Um, basically, the sugars can't be fermented, and they add sweetness, they add creaminess, and they add a very nice body to the beer, giving it that texture, that flavor, that uh, consistency, if you the will. Richness. I mean, it, it, rich in that. I think that's the word I'm looking for. It definitely uh, changes things, and it, I mean. If you like me, like I said, I don't really milk sounds aren't really my go to. But I mean, this is you like flavor. You like raspberry. You like chocolate. I mean, this is a great one to start off with. Definitely. So one thing I I just love about the the milk stout style, um, it's a relatively new style of beer. It kind of first appeared in the early 1900s. So compared with, you know, beer, I mean, beer has been around for centuries. And so the milk stout kind of popped up in the early 1900s in England and it was originally claimed to be nutritious because it's got milk in it. 
so they would give it to nursing mothers so that they could get more we do not condone this it's not true um and then at one point like like pretty recently like within the last well the facts are true that they would do that they would do that or that yeah that it's nutritious (laughs) No, 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 that they would do that. They would, oh, yeah, that is true. That's but true. It, it's not healthy to give to nursing mothers. So if you're, if you're a nursing mother listening to us while you nurse your newborn baby. <laughs> Maybe don't drink this. Stop. Just put it down. Put it down, mama. <laughs> put it back in the fridge. You can get it at another time. <laughs> when you're done. Don't let the hubby grab rearing it. Rearing the child. But they would, they, but doctors would prescribe it to nursing mothers in, in England in the early 1900s. God, how medicine has, has come a long way. Uh, and then, Can so, you okay. freaking imagine? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, you're feeling bad? Here, drink this stout. I'm Marie, sorry, you know what no, you no, should no, drink do? Drink this. You'll feel a lot better. But, okay, the rest of the story, though, is that um, later on, like, if, like maybe like 50 years late, like I don't know exactly what the date was. It might have been like this, the 1970s. They made it illegal to call it a milk stout. Because people thought it was nutritious. So they were like, you can't associate mm. the word milk with this beer at all. And in like 2012 hmm. or something, like a few years ago, they like upheld that. To this day, it really? can't be called that a recently. milk stout in England, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Wow. It can be called that crazy. everywhere else in the world. But in England, you can't call it a, a milk stout. That's that's very interesting. I, Isn't that wild? I do kind of see why they would want to shy away from the name just given the nutritious aspect to it. But, huh, I I did not know that. that they is, call it sweet that stouts. Anywho. Sweet stouts, well, just definitely a little, sweet. Just learning together in a safe space. Um, let's just talk about, together. Let's talk about uh, Left Hand Brewing a little bit. Let's the, the do place. it. Let's talk about this awesome place located in Longmont, Colorado. Uh, co-founded by college buddies, Dick Dorr and Eric Wallace in 93. They basically had an idea of quote unquote, fixing the beer world. Um, Eric's mission from God. Uh, they really wanted to revolutionize new things. Um, one of the coolest things about this brewery that I learned was, or that we learned was that it's proudly employee owned. As the brewery got more successful, uh, they wanted to give back to the employees that were working there. So they created an employee stock ownership plan, ESOP, if you will, in 2015. Uh, They basically took out a loan, purchased back more than 15% of stock from existing stockholders, and they established a trust that they regularly contribute to. And so basically now, employees now own majority of the company. This keeps... Everybody engaged in the business, in the stake of the business. It keeps everyone, um, you know, uh, interested, to say the least, um, to want to work harder. And I think it's a really great idea to give back to the people that are help making this awesome place run. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, a, a it's lot of, really, really cool to hear. There are a good number of breweries that do this, this uh, ESOP thing. Um, where that yeah, are, it's you like... Know, Kind of uh, starting to become like a real popular thing. It's a really um, noble kind of <laughs> way to. I mean, you know, it's great for the for the owners because, it, like you said, it keeps the employees engaged, it keeps them interested in what's going on. But it's also great for the employees. They feel like they're a part of something. Um, they are a part of something, and they're, you know, they're they're getting a piece back of what they are creating. And so, um, rather than selling the company to some to to like a bigger corporation or or taking you know a a million dollar billion whatever it would be paycheck um eric wallace wanted to wanted to be employee owned and they and they they were partially employee owned before they did this uh but now they're like pretty much entirely employee owned and it's it's awesome and some of the articles we've been finding first of all eric wallace just he just looks like a badass i'm sorry he's just this dude with a goatee just with a beer in his hand and and he's got this look on his face that says like yeah i own this place no you can't park there like he's just he looks like the man but one of the the coolest things that i read um on some of the articles we were reading a direct quote from the article even if you offered eric wallace one billion dollars he says 
he wouldn't sell Left Hand Brewing Company to a private equity firm. Instead, he just entrusted more than half of it to his employees. And then it breaks down and talks about it. But I mean, that, that's just so badass. He, you know, and it, it's it's things like that that really get us going uh, that make us want to talk about it because, you know, it's it's sometimes it is for the money and most of the time it's not. Sometimes it's just for the love of creating something new, creating something unique. And that's what we really love to see. We get inspired by that. I think that's one thing we really relate to too as uh artists and actors you know i i just i craft beer is obviously a business it's a business everybody's you know out to make money but these brewers are artists and i think that i just really believe that the the craft beer industry is booming in such a way that the only reason to get into it nowadays is because you really love it and because you really um love creating something and so it's not all about the money and um for this guy eric i mean he he, i believe you know he said that he had kind of been a he just knew beer was his calling i mean you said he called it his mission from god um and now he's got employees that are that are underneath him that he's kind of shepherding this uh generation does it make you want to get up and go to work like that's it's my mission that's, from God. That, I think that's you know it's it's literally like well I own a piece of the company I can't call out yeah. sick today you know I'm going into work you know I'm gonna go brew it's some really beer. Cool. Um, um, and they do they also do great causes. Um, every month they basically work with an organization uh, raising money. Uh, they call it Flight for a Cause. Um, so every month you can choose a special uh, flight of their favorite brews. Um, five dollars from every flight sold goes to a local nonprofit. Uh, this month for the month of January, 2020, they are partnering with cooking matters, Colorado, um, basically to help end childhood hunger by inspiring families to make healthy food choices. Great organization. Um, the new events are always listed. I, I believe it's, it's a different event and different, uh, pro- nonprofit every single month. So if you go to their website, um, you can certainly find all of that, uh, just lefthandbrewing.com, uh, for this specifically lefthandbrewing.com slash calendar. Um, you can find all of the info there, um, but really great stuff. And, uh, who doesn't like a nice flight for a cause for a cause flight for a cause. Um, they Um, have, I do have to they, Go ahead. they they have an adorably their brewery is so <laughs> Colorado. It's like you look at the storefront and you're like, oh, it's like a nice little cabin in the woods. But then there's like the big silos behind it and stuff, and they built out the building, so it's like it's a brewery, but it's not like a brewery like a factory or like a brewery in like a warehouse situation like a lot of them are. It just it looks like a cottage nestled in the hills and it just makes me think Colorado and you can go there uh visit obviously tours are available tours are free you can sign up online tours are free uh food trucks um each day different food trucks and then at the brewery yes. on tap you can they've got 22 beers on tap tons of uh tons of nitros and milk stouts out of the 22 beers on tap i believe 9 of them were nitros and 7 of them were stout were milk stouts this is the left hand raspberry milk stout. Um, perfect for this time of year. Like, I'm going to say it one more time. This is a Valentine's Day beer. It's cold outside. You need something to curl up by the fire, make you feel love. Whether you have love or not, this beer could be your love. Uh, just drink it and feel delightful inside. And uh, you're in the <laughs> I am ready. So, number two. Moving on. Brewery Oma Gang's Three Philosophers. Now, before we even dive into this, we should talk about the fact that for the first time on the podcast, Gabe, we're drinking different beers. It only took five episodes. So, the Three Philosophers beer is uh, a quadruple ale um, blended with Belgian Creek uh, cherries and then, um, and it's a staple of this brewery. They've been brewing it since I believe it made its debut in 2001. Now they have a whole bunch of different versions of it. They put it into pint cans and they sell a wine barrel aged one. They sell a bourbon barrel aged one. They sell one that they added blueberries and coffees to. And they have even have a few uh, retired ones. They did one with like strawberries and some other things. So, Gabe, what are you drinking? I have the blueberry coffee version and. As a fan of blueberries and all things blue, I couldn't be more excited. 
Hey, Steven, what kind do you have? And I, this should come as a shock to no one who's listened to any episode. I have the bourbon barrel aged one. Um, I didn't, I thought you didn't like bourbon barrel aged. I believe in the last episode I said you could age human piss in a bourbon barrel and I would drink it. See, that, that, see that's where you lose me. We're, okay. Well, so let's talk about, okay, so I'm, so <laughs> I'm looking at, I don't know what yours looks like. I, mine is like, the cool thing is, on like the SRM scale, right? It's like dark, but it's not black. It's like a dark brown, but there's this beautiful reddish kind of hue to it. So it's more in like the yes. 36, 37, 38 range, not like over 40. It doesn't look like a stout. It's just, it, it's it got like a mahogany color to it, you know? Yeah, that's what I, I was just about to say that I've got that like dark, rich, wooden color to it um i think our colors look a little similar mine might be a little bit lighter actually yeah yours looks a little lighter than mine it looks a little lighter i'm i'm also a little interested because this is made with it's it's the blueberry i'm drinking the blueberry coffee so i'm wondering if i'm going to be wired all night from (laughs) drinking this but that's just a risk i'm going to have to take because i couldn't be more excited about this um smelling it offhand for me so the head is definitely a uh very slight but full head on top definitely doesn't dissipate sits at the top mine had no mine had no head at all it like literally didn't have a head and it's and it uh and no lacing or anything either it's just kind of like sitting there pretty flat i actually don't smell anything to be honest with you i smell like beer but i don't i don't smell the blueberry i don't smell coffee so i'm i'm interested in trying it to see if i taste that you know what i what mean what i smell first and foremost is bourbon uh and caramel and vanilla Ooh, nice and cherry sort of it's hard bottoms to up bottoms up Ooh, interesting wow um well mine is ridiculously complex you get Bourbon first and foremost, you get oak, you get cherry, you get so you get this like caramel sweet thing as it goes down your mouth. Like the flavors are deep and complex and mixing around in my mouth. Like uh, the 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 barrel aging really enhances and and you know bourbon and cherries go so well together. Uh, like I said, there's um, cre- a Belgian Creek ale mixed into this. A Creek ale is a cherry ale from belgium it's a belgian style of of beer that has cherries in it so that's in there all of that comes through to me um along with some like just some smokiness some but but the caramel and the vanilla that was the most surprising part to me was as it went down it was like i just got this like sweetness in the back of my mouth yeah um on my end i i definitely get I also get very similar the oakiness. Um, definitely getting a little bit of chocolate. I am getting fruitiness. I can't quite put my finger on what. I think because it's called the blueberry coffee, I'm immediately thinking blueberry. But I think if I didn't know the name of this beer, if somebody, if this was a blind taste test and you were like, what does this taste like? I would say fruitiness, but I don't think I'd be able to pick which fruit. You know what I mean? Well, however, that's not necessarily like a bad thing. I'm just, I'm, and, and you know, it also could be from the left hand stat we were drinking earlier, mm-hmm. um, kind of mixing the flavors. But well, I mean, you've got uh, in theory. I mean, I'm not tasting your beer, so I don't know. But in theory, there's you know, there's blueberry and coffee in the batch, but it's still got that cherry in it too. So there's probably a blend of fruits that you're that you're yeah. experiencing. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the blend. I'm definitely getting a rich, uh, syrupy feel. Um, Belgian quad, I think, is uh, a different language for strong ass beer. Um, <laughs> in a way, uh, definitely a Belgian style ale, just with a lot of strength and a lot of bold flavor. Um, compared to other styles such as like double and triple, um, it's typically dark. Uh, plays deep within rich red and ruby brown um, end of the spectrum. Like we talked earlier, that's exactly what we're getting on the on the um um. The color that that's SRM. Yes, the, the color. color's yeah, the yeah. SRM so, chart. Yeah, 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 the SRM is definitely on the thirty-eight, thirty-nine side of thing, maybe thirty-seven ish. Um, but yeah, it's not really bitter. It's just it's it's got that smooth richness to it. And I am very glad I'm drinking out of a glass 
because mm-hmm. I feel like it just gives it room to expand a little bit. And I just yeah, feel like it's breathe. easier to taste things when there's a, this is going to sound weird, but honestly, when there's a, you know, when, with the can, there's only a, such a small opening, but like with a glass, you can, it, it really, allows it to breathe and it allows you to see yeah. the aromas coming off of it. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's kind of like wine in a sense of, you know, you give it room, like you let it, just let it breathe. Like you said. Yeah. When you get into these boozier beers, it is, it's exactly like, I mean, it's, you know, it's exactly like wine, especially if they've been aging in bourbon barrels like mine has, right. you know, they want to breathe and just, you know, expand a little bit. And then you get to put your nose up to the glass and take in those aromas and, and have an experience before you put it in your mouth. And the two experiences could be different and that's exciting. That's what makes it fun. Again, drinking beer can be a whole sensory experience. It can be um, a I whole. I also love the, uh, the artwork on the can. Um, it's got three yeah. guys on it. There's a, a, a three half philosophers, moon, if you will, three philosophers, the three a half wise moon men. that looks like the one Taylor Swift wrote in cats. Oh God. We're not going to talk about that again. <laughs> no, right? we don't have to go there. I... <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> let's talk about Oma Gang Brewing. Oma Gang is in Cooperstown, New York, home of Shout what, out. Gabe? Home of the guys, the, the heroes of our time. Wow, the Baseball Hall of Fame. I was going to play Mike Breen and everything. I can't believe you didn't know that. Well... No, yeah, it's okay. That, you just sit in your shame. That's 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 sad, baseball. but it's fine. Well, okay, first of all, I just didn't know where the Baseball Hall of Fame was. I teach you, and I didn't know I, that's the I, direction I, you were going in. Obviously, like everyone knows, the Baseball Hall of Fame is in Cooper's. If maybe not everyone, but uh, the, you should have. Th- thank you. I did, thank you. and I don't care about baseball because it's an well, inferior sport, should. and football's better. Um, Go Yankees! All right, so, Oma Gang is there. Uh, they are a farmhouse brewery um, founded. By a collaboration, there were like a bunch of different Belgian brewing companies that uh, came together uh, along with these two entrepreneurs slash importers, Don Feinberg and Wendy Littlefield. So those two people got together, these Belgian brewers, kind of they all came over, collaborated and brought this Belgian style farmhouse brewing to America in a way that the craft beer scene at the time wasn't really used to. It's kind of a different style um, and they built like a, a farmhouse brewery. Um, the pair sold their shares to Duvel Mortgat Brewery, which is in Belgium. That was one of the brewers that was part of that collective. So Duvel Mortgat took complete ownership of Oma Gang um, at the time. So that is a Belgian operation. It's a fourth generation family owned business um, that's been brewing amazing beers since 1871. That's so awesome. It's, it's a long time. Fourth, um, fourth generation family. That's sweet. They were they were an initial investor, like I said, in Oma Gang, and then uh, they became the sole owner. So, in addition to Oma Gang, this family also includes in America Boulevard Brewing Company and one of my favorite, if not my favorite, brewer- breweries in America, Firestone Walker. Um, which explains why this beer is so great because the things they're doing at Firestone Walker that's that's in the two roads category of like we'll get there. Oh yeah. yeah we just yeah. need we'll, Gabe to we'll get, get to that. California. We can't do I, that. Yeah, well that's that's one of the things. It's like we want to we want it to be super local. So next time I go fly my ass back out to LA so I can See chill with Steven, um, we can we can knock that episode out. But don't worry, that one's coming too. But Fire so Duvel Mortgat owns Firestone Walker. They also own Oma Gang, um, and then they own a bunch of uh, breweries in Belgium. So they're a huge comp- company, but they are still family owned. So you know, they haven't, uh, Oma Gang hasn't been sold to like a big corporate beer company, but definitely a big operation. Right. Albeit a family owned one. Um, the facilities have expanded a lot in Cooperstown, uh, since they began in 2018. The tap room got a major renovation. Um, so this radically renovated tap house opened up 20 tap bar, 10 tap tasting room. Uh, a cafe, a covered patio. Cafe and kitchen. Yeah. I love when breweries have food. I, if you know me, you know I like to eat. And so it's just like, oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, a lot of breweries do the food truck thing. <laughs> yeah, totally, oh, Gabe. Like get food. it. Moving on. No, I get it. Go ahead. I was you with you. you. I was with you. But, okay, so Oma Gang basically is tra- is bringing the Belgian brewing style to America. That's that's their main thing. That's what they do. Um, so 
yeah, a great brewery out of New York. And like we said, the one that we're drinking now, it's from the brewery. They call it Rich and Complex, a tour de force, a glorious blend of elegant Belgian-style quad ale and authentic Belgian Creek. It's malty depth and gentle sweetness enhanced by sparkling carbonation and a serendipitous touch of cherry. Yay! Yay, cherries. <laughs> Um, they also brewed a Game of Thrones series from 2013 to 2019. And uh, shout out to all the Game of Thrones fans and all the Game of Thrones beer that's out there. Mike Breen, tell them how you Bang! feel. Exclamation point. Funny, I'm looking at a bottle of Oma Gang Game of Thrones Bend the Knee, which you and I drank during the premiere of, I think, season seven, that I literally yes, still was, have. It, it was either the premiere or the finale. Yeah, one or the other for season seven. I got I got it in Vermont. I brought it home. We drank it. Golden ale brewed with honey. That was he a long time he ago. he brought the beer and we we literally sat on it. And we were like, "This is for the episode." And then, oh, that was great. We yeah yeah. That's I do remember yeah. that. That was, was a fun time. They did it from 2013 to 2019. They still have one of them on tap at the brewery actually right now. They have the Mother Ooh. of Dragons, which is smoked porter blended. With the Belgian Creek. But yeah, uh, great brewery, great beers. Yeah. This always. is really cool. Uh, every summer, the, this brewery hosts a large beer tasting event in Cooperstown, yes. known as the Belgium Comes to Cooperstown. So it's, it occurs in um, on a Saturday in July or August, and it's seven hours of unlimited sampling of over 200 Belgian and Belgian-style beers, followed that by... That is... One of the most dangerous is wow. Okay, I've been drinking. It's, One of the most dangerous things I have ever seven hours of unlimited sampling. It's almost worth you and I going to Cooperstown in July or August just to go to that event. We should, it's and not that while far. we're there, we can Maybe. stop. I don't know if you know this, but in Cooperstown is the uh, MLB Hall of Fame. We can definitely stop by. Bang! Exclamation point. And check it out. I mean, I think it. I think we should two birds, one stone. You know what I'm saying? Anywho, I know, I, um, I know a lot. Uh, the other thing about this brewery is they also have um, uh, they have a sister blendery in Belgium called Leafmans, uh, and they worked with Leafmans to expand into sours in 2017. So they introduced the Oma Gang Rosetta, which is a Creek style beer, and the Oma Gang Pale Sour, a delicious and highly drinkable mixed culture sour ale. Um, so they're doing that. If you're not into traditional beers, Belgians, uh, those kinds of things, they have sours. And then they also have for my cider people out there in the world, they began yes. churning out ciders, uh, and putting an American spin on a super old tradition. Cider has been around for centuries and centuries. Um, American and European traditions. So they, yeah, they combine the best of both of those, uh, to offer fruit forward flavors. They have, uh, a rosé and a dry, and then they're also using um, fresh pressed culinary apples that are, that are locally sourced. I went to school in upstate New York um, for undergrad. New York has some Ithaca. of the best Ithaca. New York has some of the best apples, like it just apple. I mean, yeah, it, it's a great place to go apple picking to be in the fall, and so. If you're looking for ciders, I mean, literally uh, in Ithaca, where I went to school, there are, um, they had a, they have an apple fest where they just do apples for like a whole weekend, but they also have oh, a cider, yeah. they have a two week cider festival where literally all these wineries from the Finger Lakes and stuff make their ciders and bring, I mean, it's a huge, right. huge thing there. So there's almost nowhere else. I mean, it's, it's one of the best places in America to go get apples to make cider so they're they are in a good position to get locally sourced um macintosh gala red delicious pizzazz apples uh and then they ferment them with their belgian yeast um and they make they have like i said a dry and a rosé cider and and we'll get into this next week but i mean it, i know a lot of people who are gluten-free it's a thing that you know people have have uh that dietary restriction you just can't drink beer you can't drink beer you can't drink a sour we we, we feel for you we, our hearts are with you. i feel for you um but you can drink cider so i know people who are gluten-free and the way that they uh engage with the craft beer community is through ciders i forget who it was but you and i we met someone and 
they they like came over to hang out with us and we were like oh do you like do you want a beer we have some and they were like oh no i, I can't drink beer and you and i just kind of looked at this person like oh, what and they're like i'm gluten free and we were like oh yeah that's like a thing now we're not so, prepared <laughs> we're not prepared we don't have any cider we have a everything we have is very alcoholic and we so have a we, vodka coconut water <laughs> oh god we need to talk about that at some point uh, I know it sat in our fridge for like two years. Shout out to Jordan oh, Brady, the it only was, person we did who ever not drank buy one. this beverage. It was no. there when we moved in, and we kept it because it was my <laughs> joke. I really wanted someone to take it, and no one ever would. Um, my dad tried it; he hated it. But shout out to Jordan Brady in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. She's our only friend who took it and drank it, and she drank the it until thing, she left. Right? She she left with it and got in the cab with it. What she did from there, I don't know. But she, oh my she God, drank she a lot of it. Threw it on the street. It's probably still <laughs> on ninety second. But yes, shout out to Jordan Brady. She definitely she 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 took it. Like she she did it. So oh. um, we got to move on. Um, but just uh, wrapping it up with Oma Gang. Uh, definitely a cool brewery to visit. They do have um, tours. Uh, they have like we said the cafe. They have uh, tastings. All those kinds of yes. things that you can purchase. Um, so worth checking out and they have uh, beers on tap at the brewery that you can't get other places um, some current things that they're featuring uh, for, on their 16 taps include the Rosetta that I mentioned which is a sour ale they have the wine barrel version of the one we're drinking right now they have a bourbon barrel vanilla smoked porter um, so if you find yourself in upstate New York go go check them out alright before we get out of here real quick we just gotta talk about uh, Subaru's we, new invention we have a very important matter to discuss <laughs> Steven um, so Subaru can we, can unveiled you just, before saying anything can you just say the title of what we're gonna be talking about okay we're gonna talk about the fuck car so <laughs> so Subaru unveiled a new vehicle at the 2020 Singapore Auto Show it's this like bright blue like if you look at the picture it's like it's like shockingly blue like it probably shouldn't be on the road anyway it's like so you'd probably like it gabe it's like vibrant it's like neon blue it's um a new version of their forester suv and it uh the on the display is the title of it which is the forester ultimate customized kit special edition which spells the word fucks um <laughs> it's like even if you say it without the acronym it just doesn't even sound good the forester ultimate customized kit i just i i just i want to know I, I wish i could be there in the room when you know they're in the board meeting or whatever and they're like trying talking about the new car and they're like this is what we got this is what we're doing this is what the features blah blah blah, blah. and they're like all right what are we going to name it and they Forrester Ultimate Customized Kit, and they're all like, oh, wow, like that's so cool. I just want to be there for that one guy to go, wait a second. <laughs> that, um, you know, wait wait a minute. That spells fuck. Like, um, we can't. Henry, that spells fuck. Should we, <laughs> should we say anything? And they were just sitting there like, oh, well, no. Well, Subaru, in, in Subaru's defense, they claim that they had nothing to do with the naming of the vehicle. Um, that this display was put together by a distributor for the auto show um, and that they don't condone it. They're really embarrassed about it. Uh, and they also said it goes without saying that this car will not be available in the United States market. But I say... Damn it. I say let's start calling our cars fuck cars, right? I mean, if you call... Introducing the new Toyota. <laughs> fuck. I mean... <laughs> yeah. When they, they they've got those commercials of like I get a fuck the limited? people just like the people just like smiling getting in the car. Like, yeah, I love I love that oh, a car Lincoln one nowadays. with Matthew McConaughey. With Matthew McConaughey, that's what I was just about to say. Like, like all these car commercials nowadays are turning into like Netflix drama mu- movies. But imagine if the car was named Fuck and it was just him behind the wheel and he's like, "It's not about the car you drive." Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not about the car you drive. <laughs> Fuck. Like, he, that's all he needs. Like, that's all he has to say. And then he dives into a pool or whatever. The, have you seen the new one? He's, like, digging ice for he's, no reason. Yeah, he's, like, ice fishing. Like, yeah. Okay, Matthew, Matt, you don't listen, need to do all that. You and I both know you have no idea what you're doing. You it's funny because, like, Wall they don't show him at first. It's like, oh, well, Lincoln. And he's, like, he's rubbing his hands together for warmth. And he gets, for some reason, he sits in the trunk. Who's, he who's like taking opens their the trunk? Like who's taking their Lincoln to go ice fishing though? 
I mean, if someone came to me and was like, hey, do you want to go ice finish tomorrow? I'd be like, yeah, what car are we taking? The Lincoln? No. Anything else. Yeah, that's not an ice Anyone got a car. Ford, a GMC? Yeah, that's... <laughs> hand me that pickup truck. We're going to go get some fish. Like, I've got a lot of supplies. You don't take like your Lincoln, Lincoln to the a ice Lincoln lake. is like a, we're going to a movie premiere. We're going to a red yes. carpet gala. But anyway, if you're interested in a, a bright blue neon car, um, you can buy the fuck from Subaru. <laughs> you have to scream the title when you're going to Subaru and buy the car. And they go, hi, what uh, can I help you with? I want to buy the fuck. It's just so fun to say. All right, guys. Um, that's it for sober. us. That's it for round five. Uh, we round did it. Round five. I Listen, can't believe we made it this far. By, this is by, by listener request. We're doing Ciders next week, which we're really excited yes. about. So I want to repeat what we said before. We've had a lot of people reach out to us and say suggest Ciders. We've had a lot, a lot of our friends are cider drinkers. We know a lot of people that are gluten-free, so we are going to do it. Get gonna, ready. We found some that interesting episode, ones. But, that you know, episode this, is coming. But so this goes back to what we said before is, you know, send us your suggestions for what you want to hear on the podcast. You can email at the HO pod at, you can email the HO pod at gmail.com. You can DM us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, messages on Facebook. We want to know what you want to drink. want to hear us drink. Um, cause we will make it happen. So, um, please do all that. Please rate review, subscribe, um, tell your friends and we are available us. wherever podcasts can be listened to anchor app. We are on Spotify, Apple music everywhere. Google. Please give us a listen. Give mm-hmm. us a shout out. Uh, tell your friends, uh, we're doing this for you guys and love that you guys are all joining us and, uh, we're having fun doing it. That's it for us. Have a great week. See you next Thursday. Uh, cheers, everybody. Don't forget to raise a glass. Bye, everybody.